Okay, so um, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the Tools for Community webinar. So my name is Rachel Rizzuto and I am the research manager at Northern Policy Institute. So we at Northern Policy Institute would like to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, my colleague will be going over a sample of the tools and programs MPI maintains, all of which can be found on our website. So the presenter today is Dr. Martin Lefebvre, who is the lead policy analyst of the measurement team here at MPI. He was born in Kirkland Lake and raised in Timmins. Um, so Martin is a lifelong Northerner. He only left to undertake graduate studies at the University of Western Ontario and immediately returned. His doctoral thesis studied institutional investor location preferences in the USA over the past two decades. His other research interests include sports analytics, spatial statistics, and location theory. So um, for those just trickling in now, uh, this event will be recorded and it will be made available on our website following the webinar. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So before we begin today's event, MPI would like to acknowledge the first peoples on whose traditional territories we live and work. We are grateful for the opportunity to have our offices located on these lands and thank all generations of people who have taken care of this land. We recognize and appreciate the historic connection that Indigenous peoples have to these territories. We support their efforts to sustain and grow their nations. We also recognize the contributions that they have made in shaping and strengthening local communities, the province, and Canada. Specifically, MPI has three office locations on these traditional territories, so Thunder Bay, Sudbury, and Kirkland Lake. Now, without further ado, I will hand the floor over to Martin. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, welcome to this presentation. So we're gonna be looking at a few of, uh, of the various tools that MPI uh, has for our community um, groups here. So first I'll start off with our community accounts program, which is actually a really cool one-stop shop uh, place to get a lot of community data. So if you're, like, you're working on a grant application or you just wanna know all the Statistics Canada data without having to dig through the Statistics Canada website, it's a one-stop shop for a lot of very interesting community data. Uh, after that, we have our map library where we have the Northern infrastructure, Northern Ontario infrastructure and boundary maps. Uh, next is our MPI economic impact calculator. We'll get with there, but it's basically a way of mathing out rough, rough approximation of how much extra economic activity each investment will do if you in, to invest a certain amount of dollars into your local economy. And then we'll, off, we'll go into some of the uh, services that NPI offers, such as our Northern Analyst Collective, uh, which allows small communities to basically get high quality uh, research done at an affordable price, as well as our brand new sneak, sneak peek kind of uh, teaser of the Connect On project, which is a very cool uh, economic development uh, geodatabase that we've been working on for the past little while. And we're finally ready to make public. So I'm really excited about this last one, and it's going to be a real, it's going to be worth it. Believe you me. So first of all, we're going to start with our community accounts program. Um, so I, I'll show you. You can so community accounts available on our website at npi.communityaccounts.ca. And unfortunately, this tool is only available in English. Um, this is done in partnership. Um, this is done off of a uh, partnership with the Newfoundland um, and the Lab versus Statistical Agency, and it's based off the work of Dr. Doug May of Memorial University. And it's basically an informative system, uh, basically of, 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 of creating a portal for reliable source of key economic and social data. Uh, and we couldn't do this without our partners, such as the uh, uh, Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, the Social Planning Council of, of Sudbury, and the North Superior Workforce Planning Board. So this is the uh, basic website that it will reach you at our community accounts page. Um, so you see that it's based off of the new, um, let's get the telestrator here. Um, but you can see that it is based off of the Newfoundland Labrador Community Accounts Program. Um, and we have four main portals. We have the well-being indicators, uh, which basically ex ex um, has tools of well-being. Again, this is going a major upgrade right now. Um, which we have a 21, 21 census data coming in right now, uh, this year. And we're taking this opportunity to do a massive upgrade of our uh, community well-beings um, system. Uh, and then we have our community profiles here. Uh, this is basically an uh, aggregation of various um, 
various tools from uh, tables from Statscan and all done in a very interesting um, and easy to grasp uh, graphical manner. But if you want to dig into the data and really see what, what some of the table the table actually looks like, and you want, or you want to do some comparison between tables, or you want an easy way to export to Excel, this is where our tables and charts portal comes in. And if you're like me, a geographer, you love maps, well, the map portal here basically allows you to see it on maps. Unfortunately, this again, this one here is also going to see a massive update uh, during the uh, 2021 20, uh, slide sys update cycle. Um, so Again, this is a very uh, interesting tool. Um, so who is this for? Well, it's, it's got a bit of everything for everybody. Um, it's a one-stop shop for all your data. So if you're just looking for a quick hit of numbers, whether you're government, local government, regional organizations, service leaders, entrepreneurs, or just stats nerds, it's a really interesting place to um, and e e user-friendly way to get your data. So let's just start digging into this. So let's start with the uh, well-being indicators. Um, so, the, so the way that the well-being indicators, um, we have for over 250 communities in Northern Ontario. Uh, however, because that some communities are very small, um, there are some data suppression issues for this. And this is kind of a way of, well, if there's like five people in here, well, you don't want to be able to say, oh, this, because these five people are doing this thing. It, it, it's a stats can policy of um, making sure that uh, balancing the interests of the community with the interests of personal privacy. Um, so again, this is getting a major update cycle for 2021. Right now, a lot of the updates are, are um, under the hood. So there are certain things that are currently breaking when we're updating things at the moment. That's web development, unfortunately. Uh, for example, right now, we I've, I know for sure that uh, one of our tools for uh, the percentage of First Nations people within a community is currently broken, but we're working ra rapidly to fix this. Um, so, but basically we have a drop-down menu here. You pick your community. There's 250 communities here and we're able to, to, to go on it. So what will this look like? Well, so I'll take Kirkland Lake, I'm located here. I was born here. Good as reason any to it, right? So basically right now our community count indicators of well-being focus on three key metrics. Uh, the employment rate, uh, the individual after median after-tax income, and the batch and the percentage of people with a high, with a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, we're completely revamping this um, right now. Newfoundland has 11 indicators, uh, but it's also tied specifically to the Newfoundland context. And this is one of the things too from geography. Um, what what indicators that work in one specific area might not be indicative of something works in this, another area. Um, so this is something that's we're under active development at the moment. Uh, please stay tuned for, 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 for more indicators. Uh, and if you think you have a good indicator or two, please shoot me an email at uh, mla5 at uh, normanpolicy.ca and happy to hear your suggestions if you think have, there's um, an indicator that we might be missing out on that's uh, uh, for measuring this. So um, if we sorry, if we go into the dig deeper section, so we'll get some, some, some more ways into the data. So the way that community accounts works is it breaks uh, um, indicators into three colors, red, yellow, and green. Uh, and basically what it does, is it takes the bottom 25% codes in red, takes the top 25% and codes in green. And yellow is basically in the middle. And this is basically one of those things um, you see in, um, when you look at community, comparing communities, a lot of com communities basically end up in that middle. And it's not a bad place to be. Uh, you certainly don't want to be in the red and you want to be in the green. Uh, but within within Canada, um, yellow is still not not a bad place. Uh, I was born in Kirkland, live in Kirkland right now. Still love the place. Um, so, and also what we have here too is we have a rankings of um, where the various communities are, and you can see here that uh, Kirkland Lake is uh, in the 89th position um, overall out of the 250. So it's not again, it's not a really so not a bad place to be. And also, a geographer, I love maps. We also have a way here of with uh, using Google API, of, we're basically putting points on the map um, to see how you how you fare with your neighbors. It's a way of comparing how you're doing nearby. It's also, one of the uh, major sayings in geography that everything is related to everything else, but things that are closer are much more related than things that are further apart. Uh, by 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 Dr. Tobler. Um, so we can see if you have any geographical patterns in here. 
So now let's go to the community profile section. So community profile section here is we give you your basic demographics uh, of the population pyramid. Uh, like example, here we have the population pyramid of Kirkland Lake. Um, so we see here to the, the baby boomer cohort. So it also allows you to figure out what type of needs your community has coming down the road. Um, a, this, this would indicate to you that we're going to need se more senior care in the next little while compared to if this were down here or people of childbearing age. Well, we'll know that, oh, this is going to, like this, the baby boom echo here. We'll see, we know that we're either going to need more schools or uh, more high schools. You know, it, it, it allows you to, to plan ahead, have an idea of what's going on um, down the road. Um, you also see too the certain co whether you're, you're missing certain cohorts, like if you have for youth out migration, uh, you can see that uh, well maybe they'll they're leaving for their 20s and a fair number come back in their 30s. It it gives you a, a hint of things are going on. Again, it's it, it's a population pyramids are an interesting tool for being able to plan out what your community might need in the future. It gives it gives a nice hint. Um, other data that we have here too is uh, the pie chart here for marital status. Um, francophone population. I'm a francophone from Kirkland Lake. Uh, so I, now I count as part of that 14%. But also, um, when it says about averages, especially 2010 averages, it's got to be careful of averages, right? If Elon Musk were to join the Zoom call, the average wealth of participants here would be in the billions. Um, doesn't mean we're all billionaires, it, but it, it's one of those things too. I've got to throw that, that, that warning out there about, uh, about averages. Uh, also, it uh, shows you what the percentage of uh, the population is Indigenous, uh, First Nations, Métis. Um, again, this, this, um, this function is currently broken. We're working hard to fix it right now. So next is the tables and charts. And again, these give you a very wide selection uh, of tables. Um, for every committee, you'll see either a check mark or an X. Check mark says that we have that table available for you for download. And it basically gives you all of your, the basics that you would get from StatsCan, except that except for searching for multiple tables, we have it in one place for you. So demographics, health, income, education, employment, um, so society, culture, and all that. Um, again, once again, for smaller communities, you'll have data suppression issues. We can't. That's how Statistics Canada. Uh, works with, uh, with small communities is to protect the interest of the individual in the community from over disclosure. And lastly, uh, but not least, we have the maps. Again, I'm a map guy, geographer, kind of have the degree for it. Um, so it's to, um, again, we'll have, um, you can either go by sub census subdivision or census division. Uh, right now we can only look at population numbers. This is changing with the next update, hopefully soon. Can't give, you, can't give an exact date, but we're going to get all of the information that you, you can get from the previous section, should be able to translate over to maps pretty soon. Um, and so this is what the map looks, so this will give you a map, allow you to see here, uh, you can see the population by district. Uh, right now we use the Jenks Natural Breaks, which is a really cool cartography way of setting up uh, colored maps. Basically it creates groups in which the, the groups um, so within the, it minimizes the, the differences within the group and maximizes the differences outside the groups. It's a really cool way of sorting method, a sorting method for geographers, but I know that not everybody is a geography nerd. So we're also in the next update, we're also bringing in quantiles for this. So you'll be able to break it up into uh, four or five groups um, of, of uh, equal distance to, to be able to do that if you want, if makes it easier for some people when they're doing grant applications. Speaking of maps, so let's continue with the map theme. Uh, we have our thematic map library. Again, this is a free tool posted on the MPI website for the community. So if you look at our map section, we'll give you two, um, two basic sections for the maps. Uh, we have the uh, Northern Ontario infrastructure boundary map and the Ring of Fire uh, transportation infrastructure map. I'll focus mostly on this one here because this one here is the most attractive one. This is more, uh, one giant PDF of, uh, of the maps available for the Ring of Fire. So this is what it looks like. This is a Esri G Web GIS uh, interface. And basically up here, we have a whole bunch of different layers uh, that, and here's your, your map. So there, I now have it on census divisions, 
But as you'll see a bit later on, I'll show you a couple of different ones as well. But what layers do we have? Well, we have their various boundaries, economic regions, census districts, cities, towns, municipalities, uh, townships. We have infrastructure, uh, roads, rail. We also differentiate between passenger and freight lines. Uh, winter roads, which are very important for communities of, uh, that, are that are remote and rural. Uh, airports, hydro lines, bus pa passenger bus services, although this one here will be updated. It still has some of the old Greyhound data in it, uh, but with COVID and everything throwing uh, a, a massive monkey wrench into, into things, it's uh, a massive wrench into this. It's, uh, it needs updating at the moment. So for example, um, he here's the, uh, uh, the, the DSAB map. Um, so again, and this is one of the things too, you, you realize when you grew up in Northern Ontario, not all the different geographies map onto each other. Um, so you know that the DSABs and sometimes the health units don't match up, or um, you might be in one, you might be in one district, but different LIN network. Um, so it, these are very useful tools saying, what are we doing? Our analysts here at NPI use this function very often when we're dealing with stuff. With uh, non stand with uh, non district uh, boundaries, we also have healthy. Uh, we have healthiest. We also have school districts, um, workforce planning boards. This is a very useful tool for us. And this is actually one of our newest maps, which is the Statistics Canada uh, Remoteness Index. So uh, recently, Statistics Canada came up with a way of measuring how remote and rural a an area is or how remote an area is and it's basically based off of your transportation network how far are you from a major center uh, and the like so as you can see the Perry Sound area is in the green because they're near the GTA uh, but if you look up here uh, we're mostly in the uh, in the rural uh, in the remote area um, somewhat remote not completely remote like some of the flying communities uh, or but it's it's a does show that there is some um, a measure of remoteness to this. And this was used by Statistics Canada for a lot of programs, such as determining places for the RNIP program for, uh, for, for, for new Canadians uh, and immigrants. So it's a way of, uh, of seeing how, of how remote an area is. Again, brand new map, really cool uh, way of seeing. And the other thing too is if you click on a polygon, you'll, be, you'll get this little box here with the information. So Kirkland Lake, we're in the Temiskaming uh, Census District. We have a remoteness index of, of 3.8, uh, which is quite remote, but not not remote remote like like a fine community. And on the more on the source of more info, you'll get directly sent to the StatsCan page for this, uh, which tells you the math and how they calculated those numbers. So very useful tool. So next, uh, we'll have the economic impact calculator. This is another free tool. Um, so unfortunately, this is also only available in, in English. Um, it's based off of the, the research by uh, Dr. Uh, Bakhtiar uh, Mozami, who uh, was an economist at Lakehead University. Um, and this is based off of his research that was published by NPI. And it's a way of measuring how much of the, of, of the economy, that how much is spent and creating new business uh, stays within the local economy. And then we can measure from there how much circulates within the economy. So that $1 can generate more than $1 worth of economic activity because if we look at base that one person's spending is another person's income and then that person's spending becomes someone else's income and so on and so forth. So as it circulates around in the economy, it creates more economic activity. Uh, so basically this allows you basically a, for, a, a good first approximation of how much additional economic activity an investment would make. Um, so we'll start off with a little example here. So say that um, I'm Kurt Lake and I want to create a retail store. I want to open a retail store, right? Um, so basically I would go into the tool here, which is a NPI programs, economic impact calculator. And I will look at, I'll input in my district, which is Temiskaming. I say I want to create a retail store. How much is it going to investment? I'll say million. I'll just use round numbers here just to make the math easier. This is not uh, planning for any any uh, business present or current, uh, but basically it's um, we're just using that round number. So this would be like for buy buy space, buy inventory, buy furnishings, hire employees for for a year and the like. And yeah, I'll, and I'm going to be hiring ten full time equivalents. 
So put that in, calculate the employment, and here's our results. And basically, it shows that uh, I will be creating, um, uh, yeah, so I'll be creating 1,482 million of economic activity. But 1 million of that is the one, is the one that I'm investing, right? So it creates about another um, $482,000 of economic activity in the district. Um, th again, this number is the first approximation. This is averaged out over a lot of companies. If I were, say, buying my equipment from Germany, I would probably be a bit lower. If I'm buying my equipment locally or I'm buying my inventory locally, it's going to be, it's going to be higher because the money's staying in the economy. It's, again, it's, it's the matter of how you're creating, of, of how much you're creating. And you're also creating, um, I'm also going to show you um, how many more jobs are going to be created. Um, it's, so in this case here, we'll create uh, four more jobs uh, from induced from induced economic activities. And this is these jobs are like, well, we got more employees. Those employees got to buy groceries, or they got to go to clean tire to buy stuff, and creates more economic activity that way. So they can buy more groceries. The grocery needs more staff, and it creates creates other jobs that way. So it's it's all about the return of the of the money going through the economy. So uh, here is actually a really cool program uh, here by NPI, uh, which is called the Northern Analyst Collective. Uh, and here's our website for it, Northern Policy Collective. And then and this is member-based, but it's a lot of way of, it's a um, way of basically time-sharing uh, an employee, right? So the Northern Analyst Collective, you timeshare a dedicated analyst. So by pooling a lot of funds from a lot of small places, we're able to hire a full-time analyst and basically um, rent, um, let communities have access to them uh, on a on amount of time, uh, basically based on their membership level. So, and we're able to create a, a different reports from them uh, for the benefit of both the community and the, and the wider region. So we have four different membership levels for this, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. And we're, we're hoping, and we're doing this as a win-win for both, for everybody. So here are some of the most the more recent projects that we've done through uh, the Northern Analyst Collective. Uh, we've done here the, the On the Shores of Opportunity, an economic profile of Temiskaming Shores, which was um, done uh, by was sponsored by the city of Temiskaming Shores uh, for seeing what their economic uh, activity prospects are. And the other one here too is what was was um, done by SEO, which is which was basically looking at uh, a survey of. Uh, of youth in Northern Ontario and seeing what are the push and pull factors um, and um, for them uh, for an entrepreneurship and seeing um, how what's going on what, what their ideas are on entrepreneurship. So, how, how does that and bolts work for Northern Northern Analyst Collective? Well, all layers of uh, membership will receive a fully laid out document. I've seen the previous one. Uh, and these documents will be uh, fully translated into French. And also the ability to draw on NPI staff in half day increments. So the uh, platinum level gets you 24 days, uh, of per person days of, uh, of work. Gold is 12 days, silver is uh, four days and bronze is two days. And we also have bulk discounts. So if you sign up for three year membership, you get 5% discount and five year membership, you get a 10% discount. And last is a tool here that I'm really excited to, to, to do a sneak peek for, uh, which is the Connect North program. Coming soon. Uh, again, this is a this is a think of this as more of an expert level tool. Um, this is also um, based on the subscription model. We're doing this on a cost recovery program. So it's a curated map of businesses in Northern Ontario uh, by NAX code, which is a North American industri industrial uh, commercial system, uh, classification system. And we've done this for agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism. Uh, so this is basically a built off of the Connecton project, uh, which was uh, it was a GIS project by the uh, Southern Ontario by Southern Ontario um, this Golden Horseshoe Food and Farming Alliance. And so for Connect North, NPI and our partners funded the expansion of this tool for Northern Ontario. Uh, it's modeled also also on another program, which is our Northern Ontario um, Data Consortium where we've paid the subscription fee and basically become the Costco of data for this. So we so we basically pay for the expansion of this program to Northern Ontario. 
and we recoup this on it via membership based uh, on a cost recovery basis. So what this is, is a curated map of businesses uh, by NAX code. And this is what the, inter the interface looks like. So the interface, the interface for, for this is this is basically a very uh, powerful spatial querying tool. Um, so this is the Ontario map. This is for agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism. And you search, you can search by six-digit code if you want to know specific thing, specifically what you want want. So for example, if you are looking your restaurant, you want to showcase some local produce and prod, uh, and animal products um, for, for your restaurant. Well, you approach an economic development officer, you'd say, well, I want to see if I want to do some lo local stuff. So, and they would basically uh, geoqueer. So say if you're in Kirkland Lake, you would put you would put a radius box around, a radius zone around Kirkland Lake and basically find all of the agricult uh, agricultural products nearby, which would probably be in the clay belt area. Um, and we have a, and again, this is, this is a very curated list. We've made sure that all of the, uh, as much as possible that all of the listings here are accurate um, and basically and base and so basically this is a, a way of another way of doing this of working with this too is say if you want to know where the tourism sectors are within your, your city you want to be able to create some cross promotions um, again this is a very exciting um, tool for economic development and the most powerful part of it too is that it's geo geography based uh, you're able to search within different bounding boxes, different radius of different places. And again, this so you can tailor what you receive from where you are. And it's more than just places on, an a, on, a, on a map, it's based off the distance and proximity. So, uh, are there an, any questions from the audience right now? So none at the moment, but Martin, would you be able to um, dive into a bit more detail on the NAC program just a little bit more, maybe some past projects that we've worked on? Sure. Um, on the NACs here, um, yeah, there we go. Oops. Yeah, so NAC program, uh, a way of working with uh, with with northern communities, um, like I said, one that I've worked on recently was one for um, what, what, what was for um, was on municipal insurance um, and whether uh, was the viability of of uh, municipal insurance and how to um, work um, basically whether joint several liability was impinging on uh, city's abilities to. Um, to, to work, um, it's a bit of it's on their budgets. Um, in addition to that, so it's it's more than just research. Uh, we've yeah. also done uh, graphic design as well. So for several educational campaigns. So um, we actually have a couple of questions trickling in now. So uh, Keith asks, asked, is there a cost to Connect North? Yes, there is. Um, have have we completely firmed it up yet, Rachel? Um, so I know Holly have, was working on that. Yep. So we do have a cost structure, and it does depend on the size of your community, or uh, the that you serve, or the size of your organization themselves. And so, if you email us, we can talk to you more about that, uh, more of the detailed price structure. And. In addition to that, so Tim Price asked, is there is any of this data open and available to download or connect via web services? So um, yes and no. Um, so basically, so a lot of the data uh, for our um, community accounts is hosted on our website. Uh, we are licensing the technology from the Newfoundland Statistical Agency for to be able to do this. Um, but I'll, for example, if you look into the data tables, you're able to download these tables and ex, uh, export them into Excel. If you want to do any specific um, deta detailed uh, exploration with it, um, the maps. Um, I'm not sure we're able to download the shape files for the maps publicly. 
Um, so for the, for the for the maps, the data is not downloadable. So, however, no. we do uh, we do provide an option where, say, you have several layers that you have on the map, you can download that either uh, into a PDF or a JPEG. Um, and as for Connect North, uh, just due to the due to the data limit data restrictions, sorry, on that program, that that data is not downloadable as like a whole of Northern Ontario. However, um, if members were on that and they wanted to download a certain smaller geography of that, that is possible. Um, so it does kind of depend on the data program itself that you're talking about. So as Martin said, yes and no. Um, uh, and updates for, yes, yeah, so when do you anticipate updates for statistical information? So we're kind of at the mercy, part of this is we're at the mercy of Statistics Canada. They're not, they're rolling out the data very slowly between now and I believe October. So don't anticipate doing the full updates till probably November-ish. But um, yeah, it's, again, a lot of this is, um, we're also, again, we're also working with the Newfoundland Statistical Agency. It's also a matter of not just our, 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 our personnel, but also their personnel as well, because uh, we're doing this in partnership with them. So there's a lot of moving parts for this, unfortunately, but we're updating it as, as fast as we can. Awesome. Um, so Dan asks, how many days would be required for a community profile and what would be the components of the report? So Martin, do you want me to take this or do you want yes, to Yes, please. All right. You are the research manager. <laughs> and I'll also answer the regional profile. So Dan, um, I kind of, de it depends if you want more of a top line or if you're looking for more of a detailed profile. So the one with Timiskaming Shores was a, was kind of a short hit, so to speak. Um, it took around four NAC days, um, however, and that was just for a single community profile and that hit indicators such as um, labor force uh, characteristics. So employed, unemployed, participation rate, unemployment rate. Uh, you're also looking at demographics, educational levels, housing um, were some of the key things. Uh, and also language can be a part of that as well. So kind of around a whole, uh, a whole of approach. But when we work on these projects with uh, with partners, it's really if there's certain things that they'd like to see, like certain indicators that they're particularly interested in, that's something that we can always tailor the report to. Um, whatever works best for you and your community, what you're after. In terms of a regional profile, I would say it probably wouldn't take uh, wouldn't take much more longer than that, um, around four around four days, I would say. Uh, that's just for a quick hit. Now, if you're looking for more, of, like I said, a detailed one, you're probably gonna wanna go up a tier. So looking at more of a gold, which is 12 days. Um, and of course, one of the one of the things about the uh, NAC about the NAC memberships is for some of the uh, platinum memberships, they're, so they're 24 days each. We've had partners work on uh, one or two projects within that. So um, it's not just beholden to one project per NAC membership. Um, and we'll work with you to kind of see what is possible within those days. And if something is too large of a project uh, within that, we can also talk um, more on, a, on other kinds of contracts. So. Um, the another question we have is how do we cite data in our writing from this website? Oh, um, I would just go with the standard. Again, I, I'm mostly a, I'm a Chicago person when it comes to citing, so I basically uh, would basically say uh, Northern Policy Institute program name uh, and URL. Because um, again, this is one of those things for for citing data. The, the golden rule for citing data is make sure that another researcher. Can, basically is able to get to the same resource that you were on. Um, a lot of it is, and that's, that's been my rule of life as an academic, is basically make sure that someone else who doesn't know the, who kind of knows the context you're researching can basically go get to the same, can get the same fact um, or, the same, or the same page. It's not a, it's not like a, an arcane spell or anything. It's, uh, it's more of a, it's a way of, it's a, it's a map, right? Some maps are more detailed than others, but it's, as long as you can get to the same place, uh, it was, I've never seen it as a major problem. Awesome. Um, so Crystal asked, do these tools cover all of Northwestern Ontario, including the Kenora and Rainy River districts? Yes, yes, they do. Um, again, we, we, this covers all the entire region from the Manitoba border to the Quebec border, North, Northern Ontario. Um, I used the Corks and Lake as an example because that's where I'm located. It was just 
for fun, but I could have varied it about my bad. Um, I could have, but the other thing too, to remember a lot of, a lot of these are also population dependent. Smaller communities will have less data because of data suppression issues. This is not an NPI decision. This is a stat scan decision as well for, for data suppression. And that's also a challenge for doing research in Northern Ontario, but it's one that we, we've, we have to live with. And just to add on to that, Martin, so one of the things, uh, so in addition to these tools for the Connect On project in particular, one of the things that we've, geography levels that we've added is economic, um, Cluster. Economic, economic centers and uh, yeah. clusters. And so this is based off of uh, Dr. Charles Conta's work uh, that we published in a report a couple of years ago. Um, and so we were able to, create, based off of that research, create uh, shape files that we could put onto the map. And so you can view data in economic clusters throughout Northern Ontario as well. It's also broken down by the uh, tourism boundaries as well. So the three major tourism uh, areas or uh, boundaries in Northern Ontario. Uh, but when it comes to a lot of our tools, um, as Martin said, we do try and make sure that whatever geography is available is there. And that's one of the reasons why I personally really like the boundary map is sometimes it can get very confusing on you know who cross over, who crosses over what census district. Um, so I, I know I use it a lot myself. Um, and an, an eye opener for this too for me was looking at the um, the uh, school districts because mm -hmm. they're not even they're not equivalents. So you, some some regions you, you have some crossover some spatial crossover. Um, it's very interesting and very eye opening. Uh, which parts are are, are parts of, uh, of which uh, school district, and it's not something that you re sometimes realize, but sometimes there's not no overlap. There's major overlap, so then there's no almost no overlap. Yeah. All right. Um, so we have another question: Is could the economic impact analysis tool be expanded to include tourism activities, so i.e. a swim meet festival? Um, and not entities like a new company startup. The uh, TREIM is very similar, but something that could be modified, like to remove some assumptions like car rentals as a result would be nice to have. So this was based off of Dr. Bazami's work uh, at basically uh, new business creation. So we're, we're, we're using the, the, the tools that, that, that he's uh, researched for us. Um, so um, I'm gonna say, I'm not sure I can get back to you on this. Um, Leave me a message at uh, uh, mla5 at uh, northernpolicy.ca, and I'd, I'd love to get back to you with this, because actually this is not something I thought of when I was looking at this, but yeah, no, this, would be, this would be an amazing thing for me to, to dig into, and I'd love to look into this. Awesome. All right, and um, Dan also asked, do you have traditional First Nation territories in the maps? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, in some, yes, yes, um, in the maps. We also, yes, we do. Within our map library, we do. And we also have uh, the Métis areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, so uh, Baba from AFNU asks, could the economic calculator include the newcomer's contribution to the economy and employment? Um, I believe that we would have to update our, our methodology for this as well to make that specific. Not saying impossible, but not with the tools as, as it's configured right now. But that could be a, a path for further for, for further uh, refining the tool. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? All right. Martin, is there anything in particular that you wanted to highlight that uh, um, to talk about? Well, I guess you can probably see my enthusiasm. I really love the Connect On tool. It's a really, really cool spatial database. Um, for, for stuff, um, I'm a spatial guy too, but it's it's a really cool spatial database tool for for looking at stuff. Um, again, I've helped with some of, some of the development of it um, on, on our side of things, and it's again really really cool. <laughs> um, just being able to again, it's uh, but I'm a data nerd for that, so it's. Uh, but again, hope that hope this is useful. Again, the thing too with the Connect On when I was working with the the the, 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 the Newfoundland people, um, a lot of this is there's a lot of potential for this going forward. And I'm really excited to, to bring it up with the 2020 census while we're doing this to basically make it a very useful tool. So if they, if they also think that there are indicators for cities that we're missing or that should be there, uh, shut me a line, send me an email and we'll, we'll, we'll consider it. I really, I really want to make this a tool that's useful for a lot of as many people as possible. Awesome. 
And just of note, the Connect North uh, program is going to be launched on March 29th. Uh, and so if you're interested in coming to that session, please let us know. And if you're interested in also becoming, um, being able to access that program, please drop us a line. Um, and as I said, um, accessories to help me. Okay, so uh, suggested readings to help make this more understandable. So the, for the Connect, for the Connect North program, there is user guides that we are developing um, as it is, there's lots of things that you can do with it and it can kind of be a little bit overwhelming. Um, how, and so that will be available. As for the community accounts, I do believe there is user guides available. And as for the boundary and infrastructure maps, um, there, there is not. However, those are probably a little bit more straightforward than the other tools uh, available. And the, as just a reminder that this webinar will also be available post uh, uh, after, after it's finished so that we can go back and reference it as well. And of course, Martin's always able to answer any sort of questions that you have um, day or night. So <laughs> um, we'll awesome. sleep eventually sometime. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll sleep whenever you want. <laughs> All right. So um, if there's no more questions, um, I wanna thank everyone for coming to today's session. And that, as I said, if you have further questions, you even after the, after the webinar, please let us know. Um, we'll be sending around Martin's email as well. So we have direct access to him. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much for showing up. Yeah, thanks, it was fun. <laughs>